welcome to a Fusion Friday on Tool Libraries. We go from model to cam. Right up here we've got this guy called Tool Library. Pop it open. Looks like a lot's going on here. If you take a look at all this stuff, it looks like there's a lot going on here. And in some respects there are. Uh, my understanding is they're actually going to revamp this, perhaps some going forward. But samples can be useful for sample tools, especially for the lathe tools. Um, sample end mills, not necessarily so helpful. So your sample turning tools, I found that helpful when we were doing some lathe work. Vendors, really cool. I don't use this right now, but I think they're going to grow it where you can download pre-built models from folks that make chucks and collets and tools, etc. Here's what we care about. Two things. Local and then the documents. It's really important. Uh, the local, we've got three libraries that we use. And by the way, you see how these are checked? Uh, checked libraries are the ones that will show up when you go into your part and try to add a tool. We'll get there in a second. These three libraries, they're actually discrete files on your computer and I put them in a folder right here that I can then use something like Dropbox, SugarSync, Google Drive to sync them across multiple computers in your shop or even uh, across locations. I think, and maybe even right now, Fusion 360 supports cloud libraries. Um, I'm not using that. That will be great though. It is quite handy to have your library across multiple computers. So if you take a look at our local aluminum library, these are all the tools that we have set up for speeds and feeds, etc. for aluminum. And if you take, say, tool 11, you can actually drag that tool into the steel library. I can't right now because of my screen recording software, but it's really helpful because we'll create a tool, like a 3 8 inch twist drill, which is tool number 8, take the time to set it up and then you can duplicate it into a steel library and just adjust the speeds and feeds appropriately. So now when I go to create a drilling operation, I can choose um, my local library here is for aluminum or here is for steel. Really handy. Here's the sort of the catch though. Let's grab that 3 8 inch drill for aluminum and we'll click OK. Oops, out of face here. Click OK. Now, if I go in and edit this operation, and let's say I want to say, eh, spindle speed, let's run it at uh, 2,000 RPMs. Take a look at your tool library now. What's happened is you've, sort, you've basically copied that tool from the local library into the part library. And, you know, this gets frustrating sometimes, but I see why they do it. So when you're editing those feeds and speeds, you're not saving them forever into the future. You're just saving them for this one file. Now if you like it, you can override it and drag it back over, but be careful because you can see, I'm sure I'm guilty of it, where I've got some duplicate uh, tools in here where I just haven't done a good enough job keeping this organized. Uh, now the reason they do that is because when you, you have to have a tool library for each file because I may be adding a random size drill, an 11 and a half millimeter drill for this file, and I don't want that in my permanent library. But again, it's sort of strange that you're taking a file out of your library and it's inadvertently copying it into the local part. But the reason I'm excited to do this video is we had a lot of folks who were recreating the wheel every time. I don't think they realized uh, the power of having all of your tools stored in a library, which is, which is absolutely huge. And then the last thing we'll cover is setting up a new tool. Let's say we want to set up a, a Superfly in aluminum library. I will click right here, new mill tool. Um, I'll say, for me it's tool 47. I'll do 147 so we don't duplicate it. I'll say Superfly, cutter. This is a face mill. It's carbide. Coolant, yes. Inches is fine. It's one flute. It's a Tormach tool. And superflies are actually a little bit of a peculiar tool because depending on how you have the tool set is the diameter, but ours is about 2.75 inches. Um, I, I usually don't bother with the length, then that's not good. You should because it can help with collision detection and so forth. But just being honest, although overall length here is crazy. Flute length would be point, uh, you know, something like 0.5. And, Shoulder length one, two, something like that. And shaft and holder, again, I don't worry about it. You can set up holders for sure. Feeds and speeds, we'll say 2,500. And 
I'll run it at 20 inches a minute. It gives you a feed per tooth, which is great. Um, you can store all these, again, permanently as a library. And then post processor, so that's just the tool number that we have. So for us, that's path pilot, what's your height and width. And click OK, and you can now see down here we created a Superfly face mill, which we can call up uh, when we go create, say, a 2D face. Select the tool, and it actually adds these filters. I think the filters sometimes are gimmicky, but tool type face mill 147. Click OK. There we go. Hope you enjoyed, folks.